Now, how does it do it? Well, take an example, very simple example here. If I were, I'm working on a fairly straightforward cluster at this point. I'm using grid infrastructure version 12.1, which is the latest beta, uh, but I'm not Oh, incidentally, I, I happen to be using 12.1 because that's what I have installed, but uh, I'm trying to avoid anything that is 12C specific and stick purely to facilities available on your 11G or even 10G systems. So this is a perfectly normal grid infrastructure install. And if you look at the topology of the cluster, it is just a simple two-node cluster, two nodes, gold one and gold two. Now, if I were to generate a new IP address, so as a system administrator, I want to assign a new IP address, IP address and create a new host name. I can do it now with just a single command, add the IP, add the IP, John Vip. There's a bit more going on in the background, such as specifying the location of the script. That will have created it. Then I need to start up that VIP. So we use CRSCTL utility, start resource, which resource, that IP address and host name I just created. It happens to have started on goal two. Uh, when I created it, just with that very simple call there, I didn't specify anything about where I wanted it. I was relying purely on defaults. And the grid infrastructure, in its wisdom, has decided to start it on that machine. But I don't need to know that. Does it actually work? Well, can I ping John VIP and the goldcluster.example.com? And it's responding. So on the fly, I have created an IP address, a host name, and the name resolution is working cor correctly. Now, Oracle has worked out a grid infrastructure, has assigned that address to that name on the fly, but I have, and my end users would have no reason to know where it actually is. Uh, the proof, by the way, what address is it? 5691. Uh, if we go here, we can see on gold 2. Let's see. There it is. It's come up as the third virtual address on network card ETH0. What if I want to relocate it? No problem. No problem at all. If the server went, I won't crash the machine but if, and right now because I want to use it later on. But if I crash the machine, grid infrastructure would identify that and would the VIP would then fail over automatically. But if I wish, I can certainly do it manually. The syntax, we relocate the resource. And the source is currently on gold two. And I want it to move it to the node gold one to manually relocate it. Do my end users notice any change? Of course, they don't. It's still responding. But physically, it will now no longer be on this machine. And if we look at this, we see, yes, it's gone. It's no longer there. And it will now come up on this machine instead. And there it is having popped up on gold one. So grid infrastructure can now handle all these facilities that would previously have been the domain of the system administrators. Um, I'll just stop the resource now, CRSCTL stop resource John VIP. If I try to ping it now, right, it still resolves and that will be because the DNS will have cached the address. So it's going to work for a while. One normally would configure caching of addresses to handle temporary problems, perhaps when some temporary issue with the DNS server itself. Um, <clears throat> but it no longer responds because I've stopped it. Now, to do that without grid infrastructure, it can be a dreadful process of updating. To start an address, what do you have to do? You have to find the address somewhere. You have to get it from the DHCP server. You then have to start it up. You have to propagate the name and the address to your DNS server. Maybe you have to update vast numbers of host files. It's a pretty dreadful process, which I've done just with three or four commands. Uh, I should say at this point, um, 
but it's beyond the scope of this very short session. Unfortunately, we don't have time. Uh, one would normally go on to define a dependency between the address and an application. You know, having my address fail over from one machine to another isn't much use unless the application it services also fails over. And that we could do. We could build in a dependencies between, say, one virtual host named address and one service, such as a logical name like www.skillbuilders.com would fail over from one machine to another, and the Apache web listener would also, would also fail over as well.